red leather, yellow leather, red leather, <laughs> yellow leather. Wow, Tom Kagai, Galangal. Lemongrass. Lemongrass. <laughs> okay. Hello. That wasn't. You just clapped. You didn't do that. It's for audio syncing. I know it is, but you gotta make it look real cute. All right, here we go. What? Welcome everybody to Plate Culture. I'm Lucas and this is my sous chef, Laura. This week uh, we had another international dinner. Had to do a good bit of research. I don't know much about Thailand. Oh, did I say that already? I didn't say that already. We did it on, we did Thai food. We made some Thai food. Uh, it was super good. I had to do a lot of research. I don't know a ton about Thai food other than what I've had in stores and restaurants, at Thai restaurants, but you never know if places in America are actually authentic uh, and so you want to make sure that what you're doing is authentic to the country so did a lot of research on different types of Thai foods for all three courses and I think we came up with a pretty good final product what do you think yeah, Laura? I agree it was really delicious it was super it was really spicy like Thai food is yes we didn't quite make it Thai hot as they say we made it we untied we, it a little bit we, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first course, Laura, would you like to talk about kind of what the overall first course was and how we made it? Yes, I started? would love to. Um, the first course we made a Tom Kha Gai. It was basically like a coconut soup and it was so good. We literally were talking about how we would take a bath in it. It's it that was good. so good. Um, so yeah, for the ingredients, we used um, coconut milk, ginger, lemongrass, oyster mushrooms. Basically the process was that we started with uh, the kind of the aromatic ones, uh, parts of the dish. So the lemongrass and the ginger. We did replace something called galangal, which I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of, but it is a root used in this cooking in Thai food. Unfortunately, we could not find it at any of the oriental markets that we visited on uh, in preparation for this and so I looked it up there's no exact match to anything we could find here but the closest thing I could find was ginger uh, and I figured ginger's not gonna make it taste bad so oh, it, was good. Uh, it was good so I replaced it with a little bit of ginger to give it another aromatic uh, like kind of a big flavor root so we started with the ginger and the lemongrass in the coconut milk and let that come to a simmer we added uh, some cubed raw chicken and uh, then kind of started adding in the different stuff as we went along. So yeah. the oyster mushrooms, the onion, ooh, the Thai chilies, those are important. Those That's, are the key mm -hmm. to basically every the whole meal. dish yeah. that was made. Well, minus not dessert. Yeah, <laughs> so two of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thai chilies, uh, you cannot find them in a normal store. You can't find them in oriental markets. They're these tiny little, uh, like thin chili pepper things, and they are delicious. They are spicy. Very hot. Um, and we used about eight or nine of them in the soup and the entire soup was like spicy spicy Yeah, uh, but it was super good So you put the Thai chilies in all the aromatic roots and the vegetables you let that simmer for about five to ten minutes and then you add about three limes worth of juice mm -hmm. So three lime juices because this is kind of a sour soup. It's not meant to be super sweet yeah. It's it's got a little bit of a sour component and so that's where the lime juice comes in uh, another thing we didn't have that does um, affect the flavor of it is there are these things called kaffir lime leaves that kind of add to the flavor of the lime in the soup and makes it a little bit more bitter. Mm -hmm. Again, those are something we couldn't find at any of the specialty markets that I went to in preparation and so we had to compensate by adding a little bit more lime juice and a little bit more cilantro. I'm not sure if it gave it the same effect because I haven't had the authentic stuff myself and so yeah. Well, it tastes delicious. I don't know so exactly how comparable it was to authentic ones, but I liked it. And yeah. one uh, thing Lucas kept saying over and over was to not let the soup boil. Yes. So the coconut milk is very delicate and you have to make sure that it doesn't curdle. The way you do that is by not letting it come to a full boil. You let it come to a simmer and then you turn the heat down so it stays at that simmering point the entire time. And then when you stir it, you're making sure you're stirring it in the same direction and slowly and methodically. You're not going in there and just shaking it up. You're just letting it simmer, let it come to a gentle simmer, and then you let it sit there for five, 10 minutes. And then you add the lime juice cilantro and ready to serve. So super good. Delicious first course. Everyone loved it. It was, it was a hit. It was a hit. 
All right, so let's tell them about course number two. Course number two, which was our main course of the evening, was a Thai basil chicken. And from what I read, this is a common street food found in Thailand, and it is usually made to order for each individual person, but we made it, so we made it in smaller batches and we had to make multiple batches of it in order to keep the, uh, the integrity of the dish. Uh, and so kind of the process of it was obviously you have to have a rice base. And so that was what we set up first. And one thing to note that with a lot of Asian rices and sticky rices, you want to make sure that you're rinsing off the rice a good bit. So we like to put it into a strainer uh, and just let water run over it until the water runs clear. Then moving on to the meat of the dish. That was bad. I didn't even mean, mean to say that. Um, the, meat, the main part of the dish, which was the Thai basil chicken, it is, uh, so you start off with the Thai chilies, which we talked about in the first course, and some a good bit of garlic. And you want to mince those up a little bit, make sure you get the oils out of the Thai chilies. You don't want to put them in whole. You want to chop them up real thin slices. Uh, and then you gently fry those with some oil for about 20, 30 seconds, really. And all that is is to just get the aroma out of them, get them uh, toasted, but you don't want to burn it. Garlic is really easy to burn if you leave them in oil for a long period of time. Uh, so we added the chicken to the frying garlic and Thai chilies and once they were almost cooked, the chicken, once the chicken was almost cooked, you add a bit of light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, and some oyster sauce. And this is kind of where the, a lot of the flavors of this dish come from. Obviously you have flavor coming from the garlic and the chilies, but this is where the kind of the soy taste comes from for the dish. Um, the soul. <clears throat> the soul of the dish, yes. And then you add a little bit of sugar to that. Uh, we compensated by, instead of doing light soy sauce, we did sweet soy sauce, so we didn't add any additional sugar to that. But then uh, once those are kind of incorporated into the chicken and the other things, you add a handful of specifically Thai holy basil. You can find this at, <laughs> you find this at a lot of oriental supermarkets. It's got a licorice-y kind of anise, like if you ever had star anise or smelled it, that's kind of like the flavor that you get from Thai holy basil. And you want those to wilt with the chicken, but it honestly doesn't take them very long at all. So the recipe said to toss in the basil and then just uh, cover it or set it aside and turn, take it off the heat. So you don't even have to have it on the heat. The heat of the chicken will wilt the basil. and so. You don't want it to wilt too much or else it'll get chewy and the flavor is going to go away. So you want it to just wilt a little bit, you toss it with the rest of the chicken, and then we set it aside to make our next batch. And then after that, at the end of it, you put that over rice. And then what we did, and is very common in Thailand as well, on with the street food is to add a fried egg on top. And so that was really good. It is a whole nother layer of flavor that you get from that fried egg on top of the chicken, the basil, and the rice. I really liked it. I probably would have preferred to have the egg runny rather than completely fried. But overall, it was delicious. Yeah. Welcome everybody, Miss Sophia. Welcome, Hello. she is my pastry chef, my little sis. And she made the dessert because she's the pastry chef. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what you made. All right, so I made this, or well, we made this mango sticky rice for dessert, mm. and it was it was really good. Yeah. But, um, so basically, the first thing we did to prep it was let the rice soak in some water for about 30 minutes, I think? Yeah, about yeah. 20, 30 minutes. 20, 30 minutes, and then after that- What kind of rice did you use? Um, Thai sweet rice. <laughs> Specifically Thai sweet rice, yes. Yeah. Where can you find such a rice? Oriental markets? Yeah. Google it, there's probably one near you. Anyways, so after we let that rice um, soak in the water, we added some more water and some coconut milk, brown sugar, and salt yep. um, to it, and put that on the stove, Let it um, brought it to a boil, then reduced the heat and let it simmer for 20 or 30 minutes um, or until the um, rice had absorbed all the coconut water. And then um, there was also this sauce that we made that we first 
just warmed up some coconut milk and added um, a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar to. Um, that was about it for the sauce, but it was really good. For the last component for the dessert, we had a mango that we just um, chopped up or diced. You, you, what do we do to it? How do you, what is, you cubed it? I guess. <laughs> we, like, we you know how you see the mango and it's like in little cubes? We did that. Yeah. Whatever <laughs> that's called. So basically, once we had those three components, we just plated them together and... Um, How do we plate them? So first you put, we made like little um, balls of sticky rice. Mm -hmm. and we tried using like a meatballer. It didn't work. <laughs> we have this like thing, it's like looks like scissors. And then you like, it's for making meatballs and you like kind of clamp it together and then you like open it and it's in a perfect little ball shape. We tried that, but the sticky rice literally just stuck to the inside of it. It did not work well no so then we used some spoons yeah so we used spoons they worked pretty well so we did that and then we poured in the sauce and the sauce is supposed to or the rice is supposed to be quote swimming in swimming. the sauce swimming in the sauce it looked like it was like an island of rice surrounded by a sea with some mango rocks coconut off the shore yeah jutting out out of the water and then you kind of eat that all together and it was delicious. From what I read, it is one of the most popular desserts in Thailand, if not the most popular one. It was pretty easy to make and super delicious, so. Yeah. Ultimately, the whole meal was honestly a very easy meal to make. None of the courses took longer than 30 minutes. It was, it was very simple. It was stuff you can find at a local either a, your regular supermarket or an oriental supermarket in your city. Lots of coconut milk. Lots and lots of coconut Every milk. Every single meal. It was completely dairy-free for those oh. if you're a dairy-free person. Also, I think it was gluten-free too. Gluten-free, dairy-free. If you're like that, you can make some Thai food. If you like spicy, definitely the way to go uh, yes. is some Thai food. It's really delicious. Yes. Well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for following along with the week of Thai food, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Like, like and subscribe. We're new to this YouTube thing, so we don't know what to say. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Comment what your, your favorite. favorite. Ooh. <laughs> 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 We're sisters. We're not sisters. <laughs> We're siblings. I would say siblings. We're siblings. <laughs> We're sisters. <laughs> We're sisters. <laughs> What you eating, Sophia?